Hey friends, welcome to Flight Test Tech. Today we're gonna to be showing you how to do the final assembly of the FT3D XL. Now, by now you should have already built your wings, built your fuselage, and also gone through the supplemental videos on your power pod, and of course your landing gear. In this video, we're gonna show you how to do the final assembly, install the landing gear, power pod, and also hooking up your receiver and preparing your plane for its first flight. And for this video, the transmitter we're gonna be buying into is gonna be our Radio Master Zorro. Now, if you guys don't know about the Zorro, it's probably the biggest bang for the buck on the market right now. We're gonna be using this radio in the build video, but you can use any radio you wish. Let's go ahead and get our materials in order and we'll get started. The first thing we're gonna do on our final assembly is we're gonna start with landing gear. Nobody likes a plane sitting weird on the workbench. So let's go ahead and do that now. We'll just remove our canopy. We're gonna flip this over 180 degrees and using our razor blade, we're gonna open up the cavity right at the very back edge here on both sides. Now, as we pass our landing gear through, keep in mind that this is gonna be a very tight friction fit. So don't try to put all your force at once. A little rocking motion is all you need. Let's first go ahead and get this started. We'll do one side. I'm just gonna use this to kind of open up both sides here. Forgive my quivering hands, friends. It's <laughs> just a really gentle rocking motion is all we need. Take it all the way in. Once we've gotten to the edges, I'm just gonna cut a little relief on both sides about a quarter inch in. And from that point, we can continue pressing down. Notice I'm not pushing down on the fuselage. I'm using my fingers and my thumb to push down on. And there we go. And once it's flush with the bottom, we're done. Now including our kit is gonna be eight number 64 rubber bands. This wing is so wide, we can't just simply cover across the whole distance with one rubber band. So what we're gonna to need to do is interlink them. The way we interlink them is simply by grabbing one rubber band and then pulling them together like this. Do this on all eight rubber bands, making four sets of longer rubber bands. Now using the exact same motion that we just did, we're gonna pass the one end of a rubber band through the hole in the landing gear up towards the nose. And then we're gonna take that portion that we passed through the nose and we're gonna pass it on through. Just with a gentle tug and a rotation, make sure you have plenty of distance to be able to reach back to the rear wing hold downs. Do this on all four sets. Now that we have our rubber bands for our wing hold downs installed, let's go ahead and install our power pod. You're gonna notice that there's two holes on each side of our fuselage that are meant for the barbecue skewers to pass through both the fuselage and the power pod to lock the power pod in. Before we go ahead and just try to send it through one side to the other, what we wanna do is we wanna place our power pod in and get it in the proper position. You may notice that your power pod is pretty tight. If it is, all you simply need to do is rub both sides against the table and crush in the foam just a little bit. We want a nice friction fit, but we don't want it so tight that we bend everything up. I'm gonna slide the power pod in all the way until it hits the back stops. Just like that. Once we have our power pod fully inserted, confirm with your prop to make sure it doesn't strike any of the front cheeks. If you have to move out just a little bit to make clearance, that's absolutely fine. Now that our power pod's installed, we're gonna pull our ESC out of the way for the moment, so that way when we pass our barbecue skewer through, we don't accidentally punch a hole into our ESC or damage the wires. Everything looks really good with a twisting motion. I'm just gonna pass through once, and then twice, and then I'm gonna do the same process on the other side, and this time, I can see exactly where my barbecue skewer is, I can line it up with the other side, and then pass it through. Now because I don't plan on taking out my power pod too often, I'm only gonna leave about an eighth of an inch on each side. And for that, I can just take my side cutters and cut it close. Anytime I wanna be able to take my power pod out, I can just push on the one side and that gives me just enough to be able to pull it out. Same process on the front now, a slight twisting motion. I'm gonna punch through both that. Keep in mind it's very, very thick because we have multiple layers of foam we're going through. So don't try to force it. And there we go. I'll leave about an eighth inch on one side, 
and just cut it off on the other side. Now included in our kit are both a battery strap and some Velcro. If you fly like, if you fly very aggressive FT3D maneuvers, you're definitely gonna want the battery strap. And we've also included this battery tray as well too. Because of where the center of gravity is gonna need to be, this battery tray is gonna give us a little bit of extension to make it easier to take on and off your battery without having to remove the power pod or dig your hands in too far. Now you have a couple different choices. You can choose the Velcro this battery strap in, or in this case, I'm simply just gonna go ahead and hold on to this for later. I'm gonna install my battery strap and then use this as my primary way of holding the battery down. So let's go ahead and install that and then we'll glue the battery tray into the power pod. All right, we're just gonna pull that all the way down to the knuckle. We'll open this up. And now we have our battery strap. I'm keeping the ESC out of my way and you're gonna notice that this has a nice friction fit between the landing gear and sits just underneath the wing surface. Make sure that your rubber band hold downs are easily accessible so that way you don't need to move your power pod every time you wanna access your rubber bands. All right, let's take our hot glue gun. I'm only gonna focus the hot glue on the skinny rectangle piece right here. I'm just gonna hover it right over place until I get the set in and then I press it down. With our battery tray installed, I'm just gonna tuck my ESC out of the way. I'm gonna go ahead and put my fuselage aside and I'm gonna install my servo extensions onto my wing. In our XL power add-on, we're gonna have one wire harness like you see right here. All we simply need to do is fish our connections. We're just gonna line up our signal with our signal and our power with our power. Once we have both connections, once we have both connections made, we're gonna go ahead and seal those off and make them nice and strong with a piece of tape. Now that we have our servo Y harness on, we have come to the point where we're gonna install our receiver. For this receiver, we're gonna be using the R88 and we're gonna have it already pre-bound to our Zorro. Now, if you've never bound the Zorro and the R88 together, we have a really good video in under five minutes, we can give you all the basics you need to have success. Now for this, the servo mapping is a little bit different. Typically in a Spectrum radio, we're plugging into servo port one. In this case, we're gonna plug into servo port three. An incredibly important thing for both safety and any receiver you're gonna ever bind, never start plugging in your electronics with your prop on. It's very easy to have something reversed or programmed wrong where you may accidentally have that motor go full throttle. We care about you, we don't want you to get hurt. So let's go ahead and we're gonna skip port one, which is gonna be our ailerons, and we're gonna first plug in our elevator. Now because this fuselage is so wide open, it's really easy to see exactly which re radio this is. So there's our rudder right there, and here's our elevator. We're gonna line up and make sure that our ground is lined up with ground. This is a very common thing that people run into trouble with, and we're gonna plug that into servo port two. So there's my black wire, there's the minus. We're gonna plug that in. Next is gonna be our throttle, and we're gonna line that up, making sure our grounds line up with each other. And then finally, servo port number four is gonna be our rudder. If you ever scan across here and you see ground, signal ground, you know that you're gonna have problems in the future. You're not gonna blow anything up, but that servo simply will not work. Before we put our wing on, I'm just gonna cut a little piece of Velcro and get this ready to be able to be mounted to the side of the fuselage. You don't want your receiver bouncing around while you're flying aerobatics. When I'm mounting my receiver, I'm gonna mount it on the side of the fuselage, making sure that servo point one is facing up. <laughs> this is gonna make it incredibly easy to be able to plug in my aileron servo. A little pro tip, once I mounted this, I can flip one of my diversity antennas around 180 degrees, and then I can stick the Velcro on. And what that's gonna do is give me the ability to have one antenna pointing forwards and the, unintent and the other antenna pointing 90 degrees. This is gonna give us the best signal reliability. I'm gonna go ahead and get my ESC kind of moved out of the way. We're gonna mount that after we put our battery on. And then I can bring in my wing. And I can again make sure that my ground and my signal are mounted. Now I'm gonna carefully grab all four sets of my wires, make sure my ESC wire is sitting right where it needs to be. There we go. We're gonna center up our wing and press it down into place. Now our next step is to simply take each of our rubber bands. I like to go one on each outer corner. I'll stretch that up nice and carefully. There's two. Next, we're gonna install our battery. Again, you can use a little bit of Velcro if you want. I'm just gonna hook this nice and solid right here, and it's not gonna go anywhere. And now that we've installed our battery, we're gonna power on our Zorro transmitter. 
and then we're gonna plug in our radio. At this point, we're gonna check all of our controls to make sure they move properly. If any of these controls are moving in the wrong direction, all we simply need to do is reverse it. So let's check the aileron. Plenty of throw, and our ailerons are perfect. We're gonna pull back on our elevator stick, and we have full deflection up and down. And then finally our rudder, and our rudder's moving perfectly. One thing that you're gonna notice is that when we go all the way over with our rudder, it's conflicting with the elevator. Adjust your travel to make sure that your rudder doesn't conflict with this, because otherwise what will happen is when you're finding progressive aerobatics, that's gonna cause your elevator to move slower. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now. Simply hold down my model button, I'm gonna go to page, all the way over until I see outputs. I'm gonna scroll down to my rudder channel, which is rudder channel number four. I'm gonna hold down on my scrolly ball. I'm gonna click once again for edit. And from that point on, I can go to my min and my max, and I can adjust those. I'm gonna hold this all the way to the left, which is our negative value. And I'm gonna continue scrolling until we just have just enough clearance on the rudder. All right, no conflict there. I'm gonna lock that in. And now I'm gonna go over to my negative 100. And what I like to do is just scroll down quite a bit. And once you hear that servo stop straining, you know you got it pretty well. One last thing we wanna check is to make sure that our motor direction is running properly. For this, we're just gonna give a little throttle. Again, make sure that you do not have your prop on. And the prop is spinning counterclockwise. Now, as you can see, when I run this up, the prop is spinning counterclockwise. That's the exact direction that we want this to go. A really good indicator, especially with this motor that you have this spin in the right direction, is that your prop's naturally gonna tighten up. So if I loosen this prop up, if I loosen this nut up and I give it throttle, you should see it actually retreat and tighten up more. If it loosens and spins off, your motor's running the wrong direction. And that's perfect. Once we're happy with all of our controls, next is gonna be our CG and our battery placement. Proper center of gravity is gonna be found about one inch behind the rear of the spar. So there's the rear of the spar, you can see the fold. We're gonna go about one inch back, basically about 20% back. This can be adjusted based on how you fly and how you fly aerobatics. So I got my battery all the way forward. Notice my ESC is right underneath my barbecue skewer so everything's cleared. I'm gonna put this on. I'm gonna put this canopy on. I'm gonna go about one inch behind. And what we should see is just a slightly nose down attitude. Now that we have our CG and everything is set up and ready for our first flight, now would be the time that you install your props, your spinner, and also these wingtip vortices. We waited till the very end because we don't want these to get dinged up. You're gonna notice on your wingtip plates that you have a nice center line. This center line is gonna basically go from the very leading edge, and also we're gonna line up our trailing edge and split the difference between the two, just like you see here. To install our wingtips, make sure you only put glue on the wing and not the ailerons. And we're gonna line this up with our center section. There we go. And we're just gonna press this into place. All right, friends, our wingtip plates are on, our prop is on, our spinner is on, and most importantly, our center of gravity has been established. At this point, we're ready to take this out in the field and put it up for its maiden flight. All right, friends, the FT3D XL is all ready for its first maiden flight. Now, I'm definitely what you consider a beginner in the 3D world. I'm gonna show you some tips and tricks for a great first flight, but then also we'll talk about what this plane is really capable of in the hands of a proper pilot. My center of gravity is established. All my controls are going the right way. We're gonna put this on the runway and take it off into the wind. All right, so I'm just gonna go and tax this right into the wind here. Let's go and put it in the air. <laughs> <laughs> so although this only flies off of a three cell, you do not have to worry about having any issues with power. Let's just do a quick hover here. <laughs> and we'll just do a quick converted. And just a breath of forward pressure. If you're a 3D aerobatic pilot, oftentimes you'll go a little bit more tail heavy. I have this plane perfectly neutral right now. Now, if you're established with 3D flying and you're used to planes like Extreme Flight, 3D Hobby Shops, all those, you're gonna be really pleasantly surprised. Even though this has some very basic shapes and it's pretty crude build compared to those beautiful models, it is incredibly maneuverable and it'll do everything you want from high alpha, knife edge. And thanks to the two people that collaborated on this project, my youngest son, Michael Bixler, and also Jason McQuiston, the laser master who cuts out all these kits, 
These two are very accomplished pilots and they're the ones that actually breathed in the flight envelope for this to make sure it could really grow with you. And also for experienced pilots that wanted to maybe have their first flight test airplane, they would have a great experience as well. Now for landing, all you simply need to do is point it into the wind, let it bleed off airspeed, and this thing has such great pitch control at all speeds, you'll have no problem putting it down nice and gentle. Friends, I want to thank you for being part of the Flight Test family, and thanks for building along with me in this. We have a lot of other great designs, so make sure you mash down on that subscribe bell, because I want to build along with you again. We'll see you next time.